Okay, today I'm gonna tackle fixing the position of the pointer on my William Optics 132. This is uh, the same process for the GT81 that I've done. So when you're doing manual rotation, it doesn't apply if you have a automatic rotator, good for you if you do. I, you use the little arrow that's sitting over here on this dial which doesn't matter where it is because you're looking for knowing how many degrees you need to change it from the positions. And Nina, when you set the uh, angle to be say 310 degrees, Nina will check plate solve and check and it'll say you need to change it 15 degrees. So you could put, put a little mark on here and just move it from the mark 15 degrees. But I like to use the actual arrow. I don't like to put things on my telescope. But it, right now it's like below here, no matter which way I am. If I'm shooting 90 degrees, it's up here, that's great. But starting from zero, it's down below. I have to look underneath the scope. If I'm shooting an angle there, I have to turn it this way. Now it's completely under the scope. So the goal is to just get it to the top. So if I'm shooting left or right up to that 90 degrees, which is typically the range, the arrow is going to be no further than one side or the other. First thing I want to do is remove my image stream, noting the location of this Williams Optics logo could come in handy here. So I removed the image stream, which for me includes the reducer. I don't like to take my reducer off my image stream. And you can close this off with a cap if you're overly cautious. The next thing is we need to loosen. I don't think you need to remove these. I see online people talking about removing these, but you just need to loosen these. Now you can use the Allen wrench for this that comes with the equipment or get the appropriate size. I just happen to have a little screwdriver to do the same thing. This front section to turn independently of that. So it's loosening the whole thing. You want to remove this completely, then unscrew this ring. It actually should just come off. It's not screwed on. And there's going to be more grub screws right here on this very edge. You need to loosen those. So you want to loosen these screws on the very edge here. It takes a really small flathead screwdriver oddly enough I only moved them like one rotation just got in the notch on that one you hear click I believe hopefully these are kind of hard to tell when you're on the screw they're very delicate now my dial with the arrow can turn now I remember my the knob for mine basically sits on the left when it's aligned with my image train so I'm just gonna bring this up the middle. So this is, you know, about centered there, but it doesn't matter. You're not trying to get on zero. It doesn't, zero doesn't matter. What you want is your arrow up on the top. So when you turn left and right, that you're gonna be able to see it easily and not have to put, you know, look underneath with your headlight or temporary phone light. So that get it in position and gently snug these screws they're, they feel very delicate. The screws themselves. You can feel it tighten down if your fingers are on the ring. There's only three of them. Okay, just be, you do want them snug enough that's not gonna move when you're like taking this on and off if you ever have to. Then we put the ring back on. We'll orient it to zero. Kinda doesn't matter. Then Tightening up the grub screws on this ring. Okay, you want those fairly snug. You don't want this moving on you, loosening up the train itself. Still moves okay. 
gonna put it back into the telescope. Notice that moved. I don't have it tight enough yet. And that's the rotator itself moving. Notice how zero didn't end up exactly in the same place, but I don't care. I really am focusing on getting that arrow to top. Tighten this down, I'm centered. Next, I'm gonna put the image stream back on here, starting with my reducer. Now my reducer, and I had had this reducer off uh, every time I pack up for a remote trip, for whatever reason, it was stuck on there tight, ending up having to inject on the outer edge tiny bit of WD-40, which some people might be panicking when I just said that, but it was nowhere near the optics. That allowed me to get it off. I also used one of these little strap wrench to get on it and pull it without marring the surface. So something to consider if you get stuck. After I had it off, I took a cloth and sprayed a tiny bit of WD-40 on the cloth and I wiped it into the grooves of my reducer. And the other thing I did is make sure my reducer optics were cleaned. Just did that, especially on the inside. You can clean on the outside after this step. Okay, notice my logo is still relatively at the, close to the top, like I had before for my image strain. Now I said it's 7.1 millimeters on this ring for my image train. So that's, I got it close to that. I'm gonna know that it's right when my image train is vertical with the guide camera. Some advice for maybe some newer telescope users. When you pack up and go, uh, my recommendation is to not tear down your entire scope. Take your image train from the reducer or without a reducer back, keep it all together. Pack that in a separate case. I have a custom case with a pluckable foam. I put that into I can see the 7.1 right there looking down inside the ring I back the ring off and look down in great thing about these adjustable reducer now I'm tightening it. Now you do have trouble with, when you go to take this train off, you could have one of these try to let loose ahead of the one you want. So that that strap right here, grabbing that will pull the whole reducers with it. And I don't end up working back here, putting tension on the, the image train itself. Now, whenever I make my rotation adjustments, they're gonna come off of the top. I can take 40, for example, I need to go 16 degrees left. 15 degrees left. Let's make it easier for us math. I need to be 25. And this little indicator, when I do this with the manual rotation, I only have to do it once. If I'm like within, I do within one degree in Nina. And I am, I've, I can't remember the last time I've had to make an additional adjustment to, you know, that position. It's been within one degree. Uh, I used to just do this by hand. I would turn it some amount of time. I'd hit Nina. It would say, okay, you need three more degrees. And I would turn it in the dark. I wouldn't even look at the indicators because I got tired of these thing being below. It, it was never at the top. And this was the case on both of my telescopes. I did adjust it on my GT81 recently. Unbelievable how much happier I am just with that little adjustment. After getting this all back together, and you don't like that this is not pointed to zero, it's fairly simple to now loosen the grub screws again. I've already loosened them at this point. Back off this main piece a little bit, rotate the ring, it'll be loose now. And then just get it to where when it's fully tightened, take a little bit of trial and error I'm looking at the screw up here, it's the top of the scope. So I'm trying to get the zero there. Then when you're done, tighten your grub screws again, make them fairly snug. 
and now you have it aligned to zero as well. A little bonus. So there you have it. Hope that helps somebody out there who has a hard time finding videos on this. I found some wonderful pictures on cloudy nights, but not really a video, especially showing those little tiny grub screws. This is a FLT 132 uh, model. So it could be a little bit different on some of the other ones. I think my GT 81 may be slightly different size grub screws or position of them, but similar concept. And it has a reducer as well. With that, clear skies. Thanks for watching. Take care.